I'm Captain Intrigue. Let's add a tactical drone to my superhero armor. I am Captain Intrigue. In my last video, I added DJI FPV Integra goggles to my superhero helmet. Check out that video here. Now I'm ready to add a tactical drone to my armor. But what exactly is a tactical drone? My personal definition of a tactical drone is a drone that can be used for surveillance, reconnaissance, or attack, and which meets the following criteria. Fast and easy to deploy, can maneuver in tight spaces and indoors, propeller shrouds to prevent crashing, long range capability, small and lightweight so I can carry it with me, reliable and easy to fly, clear video signal, capable of carrying small tactical payloads, capable of surveillance and reconnaissance. I've owned a number of DJI drones before and they all suffered from the same problem. They took way too long to set up and deploy because of excessive firmware software updates. The DJI Avada drone seems to be much quicker and easier to deploy compared to any other DJI drone I've flown before. And that's an essential requirement for a tactical drone. The idea is to get to a location and deploy the drone quickly without any complicated setup requirements execute your surveillance or reconnaissance mission, and get out fast. A tactical drone should also be capable of flying in tight spaces easily and also indoors. Having propeller shrouds means that if the drone bumps into a wall or even a person that it'll just bounce off and not crash or damage the person or the wall with the spinning props. A tactical drone needs to have good range capability so that the operator can stay a safe distance and be unseen during recon. DJI claims that this drone has a range of up to 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles. Oftentimes, these numbers provided by the manufacturer are highly inflated and only work in best case scenarios. One thing I have noticed is that the range is much better when the operator keeps the controller oriented in the direction of the drone. According to others who have done long range tests with this setup, it's possible to get about a two mile range when flying in normal mode before the batteries are depleted by 50%, forcing you to return home. But it could be extended further if the drone is flown in sport mode or manual mode. More on this later. I haven't done any long range testing yet, but once I feel confident in my ability to control it, I plan to put it to the test. A tactical drone also needs to be small enough so that it can be carried on my armor. It's not much use to me if I don't have it with me, so this is a balancing act between drone size and flight time. Bigger drones have longer flight times, but they're too big to comfortably carry on my armor. Tiny drones can easily be carried on my armor, but the flight times are often under 5 minutes. The DJI Avada drone has a 15 minute flight time which is good enough to fly into a specific location and quickly assess the situation from the air. I also carry two spare batteries on my Batman style utility belt giving me up to 45 minutes of total flight time. Check out that video here. A tactical drone needs to be reliable and easy to fly. The Avada has intelligent GPS based flight assist and it can hover in place and hold its position in wind relatively well. The Avada also has a manual mode for advanced pilots but flying a manually controlled drone takes lots of practice to master and the slightest mistake can cause it to crash. A good tactical drone should be easy to fly and have some type of flight assist so the operator can focus more on the mission than on flying the drone. A tactical drone needs a clear video signal. If I'm doing reconnaissance or surveillance, then it's essential that I can clearly see what's happening at the target location. Since the Avada is a digital system, the signal is much clearer than an analog system where extreme video static is common. I've owned a number of drones in the past and all of them utilize my phone screen to fly. I've always hated this because even with my iPhone screen turned up to maximum intensity, I could still barely see the screen and it was nearly impossible to make out any details of what the drone was seeing. I even tried the fold up sun visors to help reduce the glare on the screen, but it still only helped a little. FPV goggles are the best solution for this problem since it's possible to fly even in the middle of a bright sunny day without worrying about being unable to see your phone screen. A tactical drone should be capable of carrying a small payload to be used during a mission. Some examples are a flashlight for use at night or when exploring the interior of a dark building, a strobe beacon, or a tracking device. And most importantly, a tactical drone should provide you with a tactical advantage such as surveillance and reconnaissance of a situation from a remote location. The drone essentially provides you with information and knowledge about a location or target from a distance that would have been dangerous, difficult, or slow to obtain using other means. Some examples are an active shooter situation, a hostage situation, a raging fire, 
search and rescue, a natural disaster, or just gathering intelligence about a specific person, vehicle, or building. To incorporate the drone onto my armor, I started with the smallest protective case I could find for the Avada. Link is in the description. This case has minimal padding, but should help protect the drone in the event of a crash while riding my electric unicycle. I then designed a T-slot rail system, 3D printed it, and attached it to the case, and then to my Molly leg drop panel. This allows me to securely carry the drone on my thigh. The case can be quickly and easily removed and could also be swapped out for a small ground drone depending on the mission requirements or swapped out with another piece of equipment. It's a bit bigger and goofier looking than I would have liked, but this is the best solution I could come up with other than mounting it on my back, which wouldn't work since I'm already wearing a power system on my back. I did consider using a smaller drone such as a Cinewoop, but they typically only have less than 5 minutes of flight time and they're manually controlled without any intelligent flight assist. This compromise is another good example of my design philosophy that it's best to just get it done because I can always go back later and try to improve it and make it sleeker. Perfectionism is the greatest enemy of any creator because perfectionists often struggle to finish any projects. One of the things I really liked about this drone is that it can be flown using the new DJI one-handed motion controller. This controller is much smaller than the usual two-handed controller and it's very easy and intuitive to use. DJI recommends spending time training with their free flight simulator software, but I skipped all that and I was able to fly it immediately in normal mode without any flight simulator training. By tilting your wrist side to side and front to back, it causes the drone to move in the desired direction. The trigger controls the forward speed and pushing backwards on the trigger will make it fly in reverse. The tiny joystick causes the drone to slowly move up, down, to the left, and to the right. The flight assist is very intuitive. For example, in the goggles, I see a small circle and the drone follows it and essentially flies to wherever I point that circle using the hand controller. The controller allows me to move that circle around with simple wrist movements. It's a lot like playing a video game and it's definitely the funnest drone I've ever flown. I mounted the controller onto my other Molly leg drop platform using a 3D printed bracket and an elastic strap to hold it securely in place. The Avada can record 4K video and take photos. In normal mode it can fly up to 18 miles per hour, in sport mode 31 miles per hour, and in manual mode it can reach a whopping 60 miles per hour. The maximum height is 500 meters or about 1640 feet. 15 minutes of flight time is very good for a drone this size, but I wanted more, so I designed and 3D printed some T slot mounts for my belt which can hold two extra batteries. The batteries can be snapped onto the belt securely and carried with me without worry of them falling off. I'm hoping to find a way of adapting these expensive DJI batteries for use in the other remote vehicles I'll be building in the future, such as a small ground vehicle and a small boat. This would allow me to use the same batteries in all the various vehicles, making things modular and interchangeable. Things I like about the Avada. This drone is built tough. I've watched many videos on YouTube of people who crash this drone from high up and at high speeds, and other than some broken propellers, this drone seems to be very capable of handling minor crashes. But like all things in life, nothing is ever perfect. Here are a few things I dislike about this drone. One feature that I really dislike is the automatic return to home feature whenever the battery drops below 20%. It's a great idea in theory, but when the drone tries to return home, it has no obstacle avoidance sensors, so it often crashes into anything in its way as it returns home. In fact, I crashed into a tree because of this exact situation. It's possible to override the return to home function once it's activated, but there's no way to turn it off completely, which I hope they'll change in a future software update. Another minor gripe is that the battery percentage remaining is not very accurate, and this is a very important point to be aware of. Oftentimes, if you decide to override the automatic return to home function, you need to be ready to land quickly because the last remaining percentage of charge tends to drop very fast all of a sudden. The drone will try to land automatically if this happens, but if you're over water or near an obstacle, it could cause you to lose the drone or crash it. Another negative point is that since this drone is so small and since it uses ducted propellers, it's very loud. It sounds like a giant mosquito when it flies, so unless it's very high up, it's not very stealthy. I was aware of this before I bought it and I'm okay with it, but it's something to be aware of if stealth is important to you. Another minor gripe is that the battery is a bit difficult to remove. To remove the battery you first unplug the power connector and then squeeze these two tabs and pull it outward. It requires a lot of hand strength to do this and it's very awkward. A latching release button would have been much better. The last negative point is related to FPV flying in general and not to this drone specifically, but it's an important point to realize. 
Most people will become motion sick when flying FPV for the first time. This is often never mentioned by most YouTubers making drone videos. For me, I've noticed that I didn't experience any severe motion sickness until I started flying the drone very fast and making tight turns. That definitely made me feel nauseous and dizzy, which isn't ideal when your $600 drone is a mile away and still needs to be flown back safely. I have noticed that I can keep the motion sickness under control if I limit my flying time to under 10 or 12 minutes per session and to not do too many fast acrobatic maneuvers. I believe it's also possible to train my body and mind to become accustomed to it with practice, so I'll be working on that. The motion sickness problem is an important point to keep in mind when considering FPV. Now let's check out a demonstration of how this tactical drone is deployed. In a future video, I'll be adding tactical gear to the drone, such as a micro flashlight and a tracking device. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below what kind of tiny, lightweight tactical gear you'd like to see me add to this drone. I'm definitely open to ideas and suggestions. Thanks for watching, and check out this video to see how I built my superhero helmet.